Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colored Few Bible Charts. So if you are new here, I just want to welcome you to my channel. And for those who have been with me, God bless you. Also, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and please turn the post notification bell on so you'll be the first to know or you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And so today I want to go on a nice little topic. It's called God's Everlasting Love. Um, we know that God is love and in Him is always love he's a god of love and so i just want to touch a bit on that so we're going to go into the book of romans and that's going to be romans chapter 8 verse 31 to 39 and i should really start from 35 but 31 will give us like a better understanding of the love of God it goes like this what then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but deliver him up for us all how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For your, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angel nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Yeshua our Lord wow this is just awesome I know this is a very powerful passage of encouragement whenever you're feeling hated by people even the devil will sometimes come and say, Oh, you think God really loves you? You think God still loves you the way you behave? The way you keep on doing the same sin? But we're reminded here in the book of Romans by Paul. He's saying, What shall separate us from the love of God? Right? Nothing on this earth shall tribulation we know that as a child of God, nobody faces tribulation like the person who take on the name of Christ, right? Because guess what? First of all, the word of God tells us that we are soldiers of the cross. So that means we're going through fights. We call to battle, right? We're going to go through problems. We're going to have issue, right? Or distress. You're feeling down. You feel like to give up right stress and all kind of things try to overtake you at times persecution people persecute you for no reason at all right lies 
they tell lies on you they look at you in some ways you could not dare even imagine right famine nakedness nothing as it is written guys we are more than conquerors right the lord tells us that we're sheep the word of god say that we're sheep to the slaughter right daily we rise up <laughs> we're sheep to the slaughter right but because we have christ we are more than a conqueror. He said it. That because he overcome the world, we already overcome. But we are to know that yet still we are sheep daily to the slaughter. But even in this, we are more than conquerors. Right through what Yeshua has done for us on the cross, we prevail no matter what. Right? For me, um, Satan oftentimes, you know, like bring things, you know, to my mind to make me feel like, you know, um, I'm not loved. You know, when I look at my past and stuff and what I've been through, I say, nah, uh-uh. But then when I look at the word of God, I have to say, wow. The devil truly is a liar because God is saying to me that nothing, no matter what I face, what I've been through, nothing will stop him from loving me. And we have to encourage ourselves, you know, take up the word and encourage ourselves because the devil's desire and his work is to kill, steal and destroy. And if Satan can have your mind where he can play on your mind and tell you that, oh, you don't see a sin too much. You think God still love you? If you allow the devil to get that strength, if you give the devil that strength for you to believe that God don't love you, you're in trouble. But we have the word of God to encourage us that no matter what we face, no matter what, Christ love us so much. His love is everlasting. He don't love us for what we can do for him. Right? God's love is everlasting. Sometimes we feel like, um, because I do this for God, God is going to do this for me. No, it's not like that. His ways are not our ways. Neither is thoughts. The word of God said, as far as the heaven above. So nothing that we do can, you know, extend God's love for us. He loves us so much that he sent his only son, as the word of God said. He said, he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Right? There's nothing that we can do to, to um, heighten God's love for us. God's love is God's love. And, you know, as I read this passage here, um, it brought me back to, you know, a little experience that um, my husband and I and, you know, our children we went through um i remember many years ago um when we were moving from new york i had said a prayer when we cuz i don't try to do nothing without seeking the lord first because the word of god encourages us that in all our ways we should acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths and i remember when we decided on coming you know moving from new york to connecticut us as a family we have you know, our evening prayers at 6 o'clock every evening. And I remember we prayed, you know, we asked the Lord, please to lead us. You know, you know, we want to move out of New York because it's so expensive. And, you know, my family is, you know, it's many of us. And so we want to move to Connecticut where the environment is better for raising children. And so the, you know, rent and stuff is, you know, is much cheaper. And I prayed, I remember the prayer that I prayed until this day, I will never forget. I remember on my knees I was saying, Lord, if it's even to move us out of New York and bring us in Connecticut at somewhere for a certain time and then you put us where you want us to be. And to be honest guys, the exact thing that I prayed, that's what the Lord did. And I remember when we moved, the night when we came to Connecticut, to be honest, it's like I forget what I had asked the Lord for. And 
when we came, the apartment that we came to, it was a house, but you know, it was an apartment. It was a mess. The bathroom, the toilet was really nasty. I was so scornful, like I, I was scared to touch everything. I was holding my chin, like don't touch this, don't touch that. And you know, um, our cousin was like, let's go to Walmart immediately. Um, we went to Walmart that night, you know, with the children, while my husband, they were fixing stuff and whatever. And I remember, you know, I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe my husband really, you know, put our money in this. It was so nasty and stuff. But my husband is the kind of person, he's a builder. Like, my husband will turn a cardboard box in a house. That's how it is, our home, if you should say. And I remember he was just there that night working and trying to clean up stuff while we we going to Walmart to get bleach and all kind of cleaning products. And you know, that night we spent cleaning and stuff. And I remember right throughout, I was there, oh my God, babe, I cannot believe you put our money in this, look at this place and stuff. And my husband turned to me and said, Sophie, come on, man. Like, you know, make we just make it into a home. Let us make it into a home. You know, you ask the Lord for something and the Lord do it. Just, you know, better will come. Better will come. And, and you know, at that time I became so, you know, I started to look into it like, yeah, he's right. And I remember within, let me see, we moved in November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. We were there like for six months. And, you know, I remember I was pregnant with our fourth, yeah, fourth child. And I remember that morning I was getting my daughter ready for school. My husband had gone to work and I was there, you know, pregnant. You know, there's a baby there. I was like, he was like a ear and something. And I was there looking after the baby as well. The little toddler, infant, you know, our toddler. And I'm there pregnant to get my, my first daughter to go to school that morning and I heard a knock on the door. My husband is a person like, his responsibility, he take care of something without even me knowing. So I remember one the morning I was there taking care of our daughter to go to school and I heard a knock on the door and knowing me, I'm a timid person, I'm very timid at times. And I was like, you know, who's that? But I was standing in the kitchen preparing breakfast for her and stuff while getting her ready for school. And I heard a knock on the door and I was like, who is that? So I said, who is that? I heard he said like, um, you know, a sheriff. I'm like, sheriff? You know, um, he said, yes, I'm here to serve you guys an eviction notice. I was like, what? I was like, okay, thank you so much. Can you leave it there, you know, in the mailbox? And he said, okay, I'm fine. I said, thank you so much and have a blessed day. Guys, when he left, I went, I opened the door and I took it and I was like, oh my God, this is for real. I was like, oh, can we, you know, get a um, eviction notice and we pay our rent and stuff. But I didn't know that the Friday, because we are Sabbath keepers, we don't pay bills on Sabbath. Once the sun go down on Friday evening, we don't deal with transaction, nothing like that, because it's the Lord's Sabbath day. But it was a Friday that our rent was due, but and my husband... I'd already contacted the landlady and told her like she have to come at certain times because if the sun goes down, she will have to wait, you know, until the following day to come and pick up the rent. Anyways, that's what my husband told me afterwards when I found out everything. So that was the plan. She was upset, I guess. And by the, it was a Monday or Tuesday. I, I think it was a Monday or Tuesday. That's when the sheriff came and we, we got an, evic an eviction notice. So I was like, I called my husband who was at work. I said, you know, babe, this is what happened. He's like, what? And he was like, whoa, she really did that? So I said, yeah. And it's not, guys, it's not like we, we didn't have our rent. We have our rent. But the lady was so impatient, I guess. And she was, she said she's a Sabbath keeper as well. So I don't know what happened. Uh, she gave us an eviction notice and... My husband's like, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother pay her, whatever. Let she do whatever she wanna do. And we went to court. Long story short, and you know, um, we decided to find somewhere else. And the lady, you know what the lady said? 
she not gonna stop until she mess up her name guys i'm telling all this to go back to what the scripture is saying about who shall lay anything to, to god's elect let me tell you something guys and she said she gonna she's not gonna stop until she mess up our names that we cannot get no oh sorry if sh we should ever rent somewhere else and all of that and let me tell you something guys when everything was over like the court and we we said okay we're gonna come out of our place such and such the Lord, when we came from court that day, that's the very same day, the Lord blessed with bless us with somewhere else, newly placed, newly refurbished. Place was so nice and everything, guys. And I remember sitting down in the kitchen that morning, cause remember she said she gonna mess up our names. She gonna mess up our names, and I sat in the kitchen, guys, and I opened the Word of God, and the Word of God dropped open right on this same exact passage guys it was like the first time i'm reading that's all new the word came to me that morning and when i came down to the part that says who when it says um who shall bring a charge against god's elect it is god who justifies who is he who condemns it is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God who has make who also makes intercession for us when I got there guys it's like I was like oh my god I just started to laugh out of control like guys I couldn't stop laughing I was like what is going on that mama was said, you okay I was like I don't know but I just keep on laughing 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 guys because the lord is saying look here she can't do nothing to you that's what the lord is saying to me and guys you know she came back and she confessed she confessed to my husband that no matter how she tried she could mess up her name she couldn't i said wow i said babe you remember the morning when i was sitting in the kitchen reading the bible let me tell you something who shall lay anything to god any charge to god's elect it is god who justify no weapon form against you shall ever prosper when you're a child of god no matter what no matter what the devil try it will never come to pass if god don't give him the okay we are more than conquerors that morning i really see the word of god alive i was so shocked that morning i laughed hysterically i was just laughing out of control and i I didn't I couldn't understand why I was laughing but this is where the Lord was speaking to me like oh who will ever lay any charge to God's elect she cannot do you nothing she cannot mess you up she cannot do nothing and the lady came back and she apologized and guys to be honest I remember when I went to bed the same night I I dreamt she came to me and asking me forgiveness in my sleep in my sleep and I said to her I, I had forgiven you a long time so guys the word of god is power and no matter what just know that nothing no matter what you do no matter what it is you can never stop god from loving you because he's our father he created us so remember no matter what you do no matter how far you have gone from him nothing shall separate nothing can come between the love that God has for you and this is where I'll stop I hope that this will bring you some you know some upliftment I hope that this little encouragement will you know um, open your eyes to know that no matter what you do can ever stop God from loving you the Word of God tell us that we're born in sin we're shaping in iniquity but at the same time, it doesn't mean that we should do whatever we please and say, oh, God love me. God won't punish me or God won't do that. Yes, he will. But just know that his love for you will never stop. He's a God of unconditional love. He don't love you because of what you can do for him. That's just him. He's just God and he's love. Anyways, I will see you in my next video may your day always be blessed may you continue to bless you and keep you may his face continue to shine on you and give you peace until then 
שלום.